today we are going to talk about the modern concepts in heart failure heart failure mean heart fails as a pump one of the major function of the heart is to pump the blood in circulatory system right but who will tell me really a good definition of heart failure uh, let's talk about to uh, dr nadir yes what's your personal concept of heart failure heart failure is a condition which heart uh, just loudly please heart failure is a condition which heart fails to meet demands of the body okay he says heart failure is a condition in which heart fails to meet the demands of the body let's suppose if i'm feeling very much cold and chilly and my demand is to get some sweater do you think if heart failed to provide me sweater is heart failure so your definition is not right is that right so what is the definition of uh, heart failure it is inability inability of the heart to pump uh, adequate output to meet the metabolic demands of the body at normal or at its yeah that's very important yes, that basically how we define heart failure basically this is the failure of the heart to do its normal function now first of all what is the normal function of the heart normal function of the heart is to provide the body with enough cardiac output so that metabolic needs of the peripheral tissues should be met with right now when we say, under what circumstances we say that patient is having heart failure actually we say that heart failure is present when in the presence of normal or above normal filling pressures in the presence of normal or above normal filling pressures heart is unable to maintain enough output to meet the minimum metabolic needs of the peripheral tissues right again what is the basic duty of the heart basic duty of heart is to pro provide enough cardiac output so that circulatory system should be able to meet with the metabolic demands of the rest of the body is that right now when we say heart fails to perform its function when you have filled the heart properly is that right and in spite of that proper filling heart is unable to maintain enough cardiac output to meet the demands of the body right again let's recap what is heart failure or cardiac failure it's a clinical pathological syndrome characterized by failure of the heart to generate enough cardiac output to meet the minimum metabolic needs of the body tissues in spite of normal or above normal filling pressures is that right now we have to see it that under what circumstances heart will fail but before we really delve into detail of heart failure i would like that there are few terms which should be very clear to you right number 1 what are the factors which determine the cardiac output what are the factors which determine the cardiac output primarily primarily we say that cardiac output is equal to yes heart rate into yes stroke volume now there are so many determinants of stroke volume but three most important determinants of stroke volume are number 1 intrinsic health of the myocardium heart should be intrinsically healthy it should have healthy myocardium intrinsic intrinsic health of myocardium number 1 number 2 number 2 factor which determines the stroke volume and eventually cardiac output is preload i will explain what is preload and third factor which determines cardiac output is afterload now let me explain what is preload and what is afterload right actually let's suppose if we talk about the left heart suppose it is your left heart left atrium left ventricle here is which valve mitral valve and which valve is here aortic. aortic valve and here is your left ventricular what is this left ventricular myocardium 
right? Now I told you that if left ventricle has to generate enough cardiac output, right? How many factors are affecting? Number one, heart rate. That how many times, that how many times left ventricle contracts per minute, right? Number one. Number two, what is the intrinsic health of the myocardium? Is it healthy myocardium or is it diseased myocardium? Right, of course it's understandable. If myocardium is healthy, cardiac output is better. But if myocardium is not healthy, for example, a big piece of myocardium is infarcted, of course, this area will not contract well and that will lead to poor cardiac output. So what I'm talking about to determine the cardiac output, heart rate should be good, stroke volume should be good, and stroke volume depends on number one intrinsic health of the myocardium. So all those diseases to determine, determine the intrinsic health of the myocardium up to an extent that it will affect the pump function or contractility function of myocardium that will lead to heart failure. Number two, we have to make the concept of preload very clear. What is preload? Preload is the amount of blood which is present in the ventricular cavity at the end of diastole. You know that uh, during the diastole, left ventricle is relaxed and it is accumulating the blood. And at the end of diastole, whatever amount of blood is present at the end of diastole, in left ventricle, this amount of blood is called, yes, end diastolic volume. What do we call it? End diastolic volume. Now, actually this is the end diastolic volume on which the ventricle has to work. Is that right? So what is end diastolic volume? End diastolic volume is the amount of blood which is present in the ventricle by the end of diastole or just before the systole. So this is the amount of blood on which the systolic power of the ventricle has to work and push it out. Of course not all of it. It will push about normally 50% of it will be pushed out and that is called ejection fraction. What is ejection fraction? Ejection fraction is the percentage or you can say the fraction of the end diastolic volume which is ejected per stroke of the or per contraction of the left ventricle or right ventricle, right? Now, so what is preload? Actually preload is the amount of blood on which left ventricle or the right ventricle has to work, right? So preload is end diastolic volume, right? So it means preload is equal to end diastolic volume. So naturally it's understandable all those factors which increase end diastolic volume, they increase the preload. For example, if you increase venous return, preload is increased. Or if you increase the diastolic duration and ventricular filling time is increased, again, what really happens, preload is increased. So, ventricle is, should be intrinsically healthy, then it should be able to work on amount of blood, which is end diastolic volume, which is also called preload. Right? And then ventricle has to push this blood out right, against the total peripheral resistance. You know the vessels in the periphery, right? if we go for smaller units of the vessels, smaller deviants, right? you know that uh, when these major arteries progressively divide into smaller branches, the smaller branches just before the capillary networks, just before the capillary networks, these smaller branches are having arterioles and there are, yeah, what are this? Arterioles are highly muscular vessels. They are pre-capillary sphincters and arterioles. So, when left heart is pumping into systemic arterial system, lot of resistance is offered by these musculature of arterial tray, right? So it means left ventricle has to generate the cardiac output against the total peripheral resistance. Is that right? Of course. Right, has to, right heart has to pump against the pulmonary resist, vascular resistance. And left heart has to pump against the systemic vascular resistance. 
right it means to produce enough cardiac output left ventricle or ventricles must overcome the resistance against which they have to work that resistance is also called afterload that resistance is also called after load so what is afterload afterload is the resistance against which ventricle has to generate cardiac output am i clear another way to understand this analogy is that you must be knowing already heart is a donkey it's a donkey pump now let's suppose let's take an analogy that there is a donkey okay this is your heart and it is working like a donkey hard worker you know what it is doing it is collecting the preload here this is a preload this donkey is carrying the preload and it is performing right against the against the slope it has to carry preload against the slope so it means it has to go up right and what is its performance number one what it will do it will bring preload over here here is the arterial end so this is the resistance against which it has to move so this resistance should be considered after load and this is the end diastolic volume on which the donkey has to work end diastolic volume on which the donkey has to work so this should be considered preload and of course the performance of donkey number one depends on its own intrinsic health is it a healthy donkey or sick donkey number one the performance of this donkey the donkey is just like your heart or maybe heart is like donkey i'm not sure but one thing is there there is some relationship as far as the function is concerned right that this, if this donkey is performing right and number one it is performing against a resistance this resistance should be considered after load number two it is it is working on this given load and this load is preload is that right and of course this performance also depends on its intrinsic health is that right now it means listen carefully if we increase the preload too much can donkey work well if you increase the preload too much can this donkey work well initially if you increase the preload slightly its performance will go better but if preload becomes so much the donkey cannot carry so much then what will happen it will fail to perform well and there will be cardiac failure or you can say donkey failure depends on your feeling in this diagram what i'm showing number one there's normal preload but if you increase preload little bit and if donkey is able to handle that we say cardiac output will increase or donkey performance will increase but if you increase the preload too much i think it should be now like this preload is too much this is one way to fail the donkey or it is one way to fail the heart if you increase the preload too much another way to really make trouble to the donkey is okay you don't keep the preload that much but what you do keep the preload normal but you do an unfair game with the donkey what you do you increase the resistance too much against which it has to work the resistance against which donkey has to work it is too much do you think this donkey will perform well what is happening this donkey is slipping backward donkey is failing so it means if you increase the after load if you against the if you increase the resistance against which donkey has to perform or you increase the resistance against which the left ventricle has to eject if resistance is increased too much it will fail to maintain the performance so what did we learn three factors which can fail the heart number one or fail the donkey first understand the failure of the donkey number one in wrong a donkey is not intrinsically healthy if it is not healthy donkey it is disease donkey can it perform well no so as disease donkey cannot perform well in the same way disease myocardium cannot pump well 
is the right number two in allergy. If you put slightly increased load on the donkey, it may cope with that, but if you increase the preload too much, can really donkey can carry that much and perform well? No, that will lead to donkey failure. In the same way, if you fill the ventricles with too much blood, they may not perform well. Third condition is, if you increase the slope too much, can donkey perform well? No. In the same way, if you increase total peripheral resistance, so if you increase the resistance against which the ventricle has to pump pathologically high, can ventricles work well? Not. So what really happens? That we can say, what are the conditions, and of course, the last thing. Three things we have discussed. Donkey failure now. Donkey failure means heart failure. Donkey failure. It's a failing donkey. If you really listen to the heart of a failing donkey, the, the failing donkey complain for th multiple things. Some of the failing donkeys may say that they are, they, they are intrinsically unhealthy. Intrinsically unhealthy. Some donkey fail due to that reason. Same is true about some hearts. They fail because the myocardium is not healthy. Some of the donkey may complain that we are healthy but we are overloaded with the fluid. Right? We have dangerously high what? Preload. Successive preload can also fail the donkey in the same way excessive preload can also fail the ventricles. Then donkey may complain that you are asking is too much to perform against too high resistance or some hearts may also complain that you are forcing the heart to maintain their cardiac output against successive resistance. For example, very high systemic blood pressure or aortic stenosis, then ventricle has to pump against very high resistance. So some donkeys or some heart may complain of that why they may explain why they are failing because yeah there is increased afterload. So what did we learn up to this? Donkey failure or heart failure has a lot of analogy right similarity to each other. If you listen to some donkeys why they fail either these are unhealthy donkeys or you listen to some hearts why they fail they will tell you that they are unhealthy hearts. Number two that if you uh, really able to communicate to some donkeys, they may complain that we are healthy but we are under too much preload. The same way it may happen with the heart which is having excessive preloads, pathologically excessive preload. In the same way, some donkeys may fail because they have to work against very high resistance. In the same way, some heart may also fail because they have to work against high, what? Resistance. But another situation, let's come to another donkey, group of donkeys. They say we are healthy donkeys, we have normal preload, we have normal afterload, but still they fail. Why? Because you don't allow them to move normally. Heart is a donkey which has to move how many times per minute? Somewhere between 60 to 100 times per minute. In the same way our donkey has to, let's suppose, your heart is beating at the rate of 80 beats per minute. This donkey is also having how many cycles? 80 cycles per minute. Now, if you don't allow the donkey to move at all, now listen here, Do donkey is healthy. It is normal preload, it is normal afterload, but to reduce the number of cycling to less, for example, rather than 80 cycles per minute, you make it 20 cycles per minute. Do you think it can maintain its performance there? No. So it means severe bradycardia can also reduce cardiac performance. Severe bradycardia can also reduce rhythm problems, can also reduce cardiac output. So severe bradycardia may lead to cardiac failure as severe reduction in number of cycles of donkey performance lead to donkey failure. Then another example. If you make it this donkey to have extra cycles but too much fast, initially for example it is performing at 80 cycles per minute. You force it to perform 120 cycles per minute. Of course, its performance will go up. 150, 160 cycles per minute, performance will go up. But if you force this donkey to have 200 cycles per minute, it will be having so rapid cycles that it does not have enough time to take the preload and carry there. So it will have empty cycles. Do you think it will be good performance or bad performance? Bad performance. In the same way, not only bradycardia, 
may precipitate cardiac failure. Even tachycardia can precipitate cardiac failure when uh, ventricle has very rapid rhythm. And if ventricular rhythm becomes so fast that cardiac cycle duration is so less, the diastole is so much shrunken that ventricles don't have enough time to fill in. You know, ventricular filling is during diastole. And if you, you progressively keep on increasing heart rate beyond a certain limit, diastole becomes so small in duration that filling times are dangerously reduced. And of course, if ventricle is not filling properly, it has right due to very rapid rates, can it maintain its output? No. So what did we learn? That heart performance, cardiac output or donkey output depends on number of cycles performed per minute, depends on performance per cycle. Is that right? Now, to maintain a good, again, to maintain a good cardiac output, heart rate should be normal, within normal range. Stroke volume, it depends on health of myocardium and preload and afterload. All these things should be within normal range. Now, why some people's heart fail when there is dangerously low cardiac output? Or the, even if there is a high cardiac output, but body demands so much oxygen and other nutrients that heart may increase the cardiac output, but still it cannot meet the body needs. Under those circumstances, heart will fail. So what will be the reason of heart failure? Either problem is at this side, right? That heart rate is less or uh, intrinsic health of the myocardium is not good or preload is ex too much excessive or afterload is, yes, excessive. Under all these circumstances, cardiac output will be depressed. But another situation occurs. Sometimes it happens that heart is able to generate normal cardiac output but peripheral tissues metabolism is so fast the demands on the cardiac output is pathologically high and your tissues for example in hyperthyroidism your tissue has a very high metabolic rate so demand for the oxygen is very high and heart step up its cardiac output but still it is unable to meet the exaggerated demands of the body so we'll say in spite of increasing and stepping up its cardiac output, heart failed to provide the exaggerated demands of the peripheral tissue. This should also be considered heart failure. But of course, this is high output heart failure. 